students and welcome to an experimental equilibrium demonstration where in this lab we are going to be uh, experimentally showcasing how it is that we solve for equilibrium constants or KCs. So the compounds that we are going to be working with today are iron nitrate. This is uh, in acid, in nitric acid to make sure that there is no uh, redox reaction with the air surrounding it, and thiocyanate, uh, this KSCN. Now the important uh, ions in solution that are, we're going to be working with are the iron 3 plus and the thiocyanate that SCN minus. Now in uh, the test tube here we have that iron nitrate, we are mixing it with the thiocyanate, we see that we get this beautiful orange color. And the orange color, which is kind of enriching over time, is a uh, sample in solution now of the iron thiocyanate with a 2 plus charge. This is going to be ultimately what we are measuring the uh, equilibrium constant of. And the way that we are going to be doing this is by setting up not just one test tube, but four different test tubes with varying concentrations of the iron and the thiocyanate. And when the uh, reactants then reach equilibrium with the product, that iron thiocyanate with a two plus charge, um, the concentration of our iron thiocyanate in each of these test tubes is going to be different since we are adding a different amount of reactant to each test tube. Now we can see in test tubes one through four on uh, this information provided here, we have the same initial uh, concentration of the iron and the thiocyanate before mixing. So we have a 0.002 molar solution of the iron and of the thiocyanate. Now we're gonna take the same volume of the iron, the Fe3+, we're taking five milliliters and adding the five milliliters to each of the test tubes. It is the thiocyanate that is going to differ in concentration uh, once the uh, reactants are all mixed together. The reason being is we are taking not five milliliters of the thiocyanate each time, but rather we're taking two milliliters, three milliliters, four milliliters, and five milliliters in test tubes one through four respectively. Now to make sure that we actually get to the same total volume for each of the reactant sets, again, to make sure that we're actually diluting the iron to the proper uh, initial concentration to make sure it's all the same, we're also gonna be adding some excess water into test tubes one through three to make sure that the total volume of solution is going to be 10 milliliters. Okay, so the way that we are going to uh, set up our test tubes then we can see here, each of the test tubes, I'm gonna pull out uh, two, three, and four, here to show how the color is actually slightly different between each of these test tubes. We can see that the uh, test tube two is the darkest, test tube four, or uh, test tube two is the lightest, test tube four is the darkest, and this is because we have a greater initial concentration of the thiocyanate in test tube four. Test tube two has the lowest concentration of the thiocyanate, which means that we don't get that push towards product as greatly um, when in comparison to test tube four. Okay, so another test tube though can be seen. This is known as our standard test tube. Uh, standard is what STD there stands for. It is a light uh, orange solution. Now what this solution is, it's a special solution. Uh, here we are mixing nine milliliters of the iron of the Fe3+, plus, um, along with one milliliter of the SCN-. minus. What we are in essence doing is adding so much of the one reactant, so much of the Fe3+, plus, that we are breaking equilibrium. We are forcing this reaction by adding so much of the one reactant to act as a complete reaction. Now, because it's a complete reaction, what this means is that we are going to have a limiting reactant. We are going to have some type of theoretical yield of our uh, Fe SCN with a two plus charge. This is going to be very important. Having uh, some type of standard like this is going to let us figure out uh, via some known in solution what our unknown is. And the unknown we're looking for is the equilibrium constant, right? We need some type of known to actually figure out what our KC is. And in this case, being able to control and figure out all of the concentrations of our species when they're in equilibrium is going to be what enables us to actually find our equilibrium constant. All right, so what we are going to do then is uh, via absorption spectroscopy and some DI water, figure out what is the actual absorbance of the uh, orange solutions uh, or the iron thiocyanate with a two plus charge in those orange solutions. So what we're doing here is we are blanking the uh, spectroscopy instrument, our UV vis instrument, adding that water, blanking it out, just like how we did for the Gibbs Free Energy Lab. 
right? If we want to figure out what a concentration of something is in solution when that certain something has a color, we can use Beer's Law in order to figure that out. All right, so here I'm pulling out one of the uh, orange test tubes. This is trial three, just as like an example. All right, and we're going to add that uh, QVET with our orange sample into the UV Viz spectrophotometer. So here we have a given absorbance now. We can see uh, it being red on the machine. And here are all of the overall absorbance values for our test tubes one through four and our uh, standard. Now, what we're going to do with these uh, numbers, we're going to calculate all of the concentrations for all of the species inside of solutions, starting with the iron thiocyanate with a two plus charge. And this is something uh, that we are going to, or I will be walking you through in the associated assignment with this video. Now as a little bit of a bonus, since we are working with a reversible reaction, I'm gonna showcase a little bit of Le Chatelier's principle in action. So Le Chatelier's principle again is that a reaction, uh, once it has reached equilibrium and a certain stress is introduced, either we're changing concentration of something or temperature, we can see a shift in the equilibrium dynamics of the reaction. So what we're going to uh, be doing here, we're gonna take a couple of the test tubes from before um, that had varying uh, concentrations, and we're just gonna mix them together. We're going to mix these two uh, solutions together, make sure that we have the same equilibrium concentrations for the iron, the thiocyanate, and the iron thiocyanate. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm gonna hold one of these samples in control as a uh, means to compare the other test tube as I'm gonna be adding some substances to it. So here we can see that both of the test tubes have the exact same color inside, which means that we can use one as a control and we can uh, vary the other. Now, the first thing I'm gonna to add to the uh, variable test tube is silver nitrate. And the reason why I'm choosing silver nitrate is that silver is known to also form a complex with thiocyanate. So both the iron and the silver are going to be competing for the thiocyanate uh, in solution. So let's see what happens when we add some of that silver. How is this going to affect equilib or equilibrium? Now, in mixing the solution, we can see our control is on the right. And in adding our silver, uh, we've completely lost all of the color from our solution. The silver in this competition has won out and created uh, all uh, silver thiocyanate and the iron currently in solution is not forming any iron thiocyanate, hence why we have lost all of that orange color. Now, something else that's really cool, uh, just to add another factor, another uh, stressor into our equilibrium is that uh, sodium chloride is able to interact with silver ion and cause a precipitate to form in solution. So what we're gonna do right now is add some sodium chloride to disturb the silver that I just added to solution. Uh, if we were to add enough sodium chloride, we would see a stark shift back to the solution that we just saw. However, that's not going to be the case here because now we have uh, quite the balance, quite the uh, intricate network of equilibrium or equilibria occurring right now. And in adding some of our sodium chloride, we can see that we're getting some orange color back. We are getting some, a uh, little bit of an orange tint in solution, but we can still see that there's like a milkiness to it. And the milkiness is caused by the existence of the silver chloride, as well as the silver thiocyanate. We have, uh, again, quite that intricate network. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt, um, try and push that reaction more uh, in favor of the iron thiocyanate, but we can see that this is kind of a folly unless we add just a ton of salt, we're not gonna get a huge push backwards, at least not uh, enough to clear up every precipitate that is forming in solution right now. So I'm going to set the uh, sodium chloride aside and we are going to bring out the big guns. What I'm gonna do is introduce some iron nitrate to solution. So this is one of our initial reactants uh, from the first reaction, adding the iron and the thiocyanate. So here I'm just adding some solid iron nitrate, not even in solution, just solid iron nitrate. Now what this should do is really push our first reaction in favor of products. We're going to be adding this uh, crystalline solid into the first test tube. It's gonna take a little bit to dissolve since this is a uh, complex that needs time to dissolve, but in doing so, we can see that we get this really big push towards iron thiocyanate. In fact, the solution now is more orange than our control was. 
or still is. This means that we have pushed the reaction so strongly in favor of the iron thiocyanate that now it is basically all iron thiocyanate, that FeSCN with a two plus charge that exists in solution. So here we uh, can see a demonstration of the intricate web of uh, reversible reactions. If you have some type of common ion between each of your reactions, you are going to see some type of competition uh, between all of these reversible reactions until some equilibrium is struck for each of them. So this is a demonstration of the equilibrium principles in lab. Uh, associated assignment is going to be due next Tuesday. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, but until then, class is dismissed.